Hello gamers. Today I've got a few things planned. First we're going to be visiting our friend, Ryan, Rayon, Mr. Arroyo. We're going to be visiting him because we want to get his reputation up so that eventually we can get that unique bounty. Because I'm pretty sure importance high is high enough that he can actually give out that bounty. The unique one, the once per save file, the special Super Alabaster. I mean, I'm not going to do the bounty right now, even if I could. I don't think the fleet is ready for that. But it does take a while to grind up reputation, so we're going to get that started right away. After that, I'm going to be heading home. All the way up to the top left corner. And we're going to be starting up another colony, so we can part start putting all those extra colony items to use. And also get a little bit more independent from all the core world supply lines. Of course, even if you do that, you don't your 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 merchant fleets don't actually trade between your colonies, which is interesting. You do get a maintenance cost reduction for supplying things in faction, but the treats but the fleets that actually supply your planets don't work in faction. They they still come from the core worlds most of the time. And the reason for that is so that they can be disrupted, because otherwise you would just put your colonies physically right next to each other, and no disruption would be possible. And the devs want you to be disrupted sometimes, so they make that impossible. That's just the way it is. Alright, it's funny how the Yanis device works, even if you don't have it active. Like, just having it in your inventory makes it work. And it takes up inventory space. Or you can just right-click it. It's, it's a bit weird that it works without actually integrating it into the fleet. It would be like if... That would be like if you could use hall mods just by having the hall mod blueprint in your inventory instead of learning it. That's what that's like. It's a bit strange. Yeah, yeah, prices aren't good. I know. I know. But I got cash. So I'm not worried about it. I am ultimately going to... Right, so first we're gonna... We're gonna visit our friend right here. Then we're going to go home, start up another colony. Then we're going to go get the Sentinel, you know, Task Force Safeguard. Clean that up, recover some of those ships. And then we'll visit Limbo. We're going to need some Transplutonics. We're going to need a lot of supplies. We can probably leave some of our ships behind so that we don't have to pay as much maintenance. I've heard some people suggest that you mothball your combat ships as you travel through. It might actually be cheaper that way. I'm not sure. Somebody should run the math on that. But it might be cheaper to mothball your ships and then unmothball them when you get there and spend the supplies recovering them. That might be cheaper than paying the maintenance cost as you cross. I'm not really sure. Of, of course, ultimately, you could just bring like 3,000 supplies. And then it's not really going to be an issue at that point, is it? Given how much money I have, I'm not super... I'm not super against the idea of bringing 3,000 supplies, so I might actually do that. That is not terrible. Yes, we are at level 15. We finally got best of the best. So I could actually put a third S mod on this. We could get the expanded cargo holds. It's another 1,200 cargo capacity with no extra maintenance cost. Being able to carry around just a couple of logistics ships is pretty nice instead of carrying around a whole fleet of them that being said I do really need to get some uh, S mods on my combat ships because right now their performance is a bit well it's fine but S mods are definitely gonna make it better so you leveled up uh, systems expertise is of course really good and we are eventually gonna grab this but first I want to grab Helmsmanship, because this is... If I grab Systems Expertise now, I don't know what I'm going to get at the next level. It could just be a bunch of garbage that's useless to an Omen. And if I grab Helmsmanship now, I know Systems Expertise is going to show up when he levels up again. So that's what I'm going to go with. Now then, S-Mods. I mean, as I do like Missile Autoloader, but I'm probably better off going with Flux Coil Adjunct first. I can get four extra vents, and then you also get 200 extra capacity. At the same time. 
All right, you must have, you have ordnance expertise. That's why you've got more flux. Yeah, eventually you're getting fired. Polarized armor, useless. And you don't even have systems expertise. That's just embarrassing, really. These two look like they have pretty much perfect skill sets so far. It just depends on, right? You are going to have a perfect skill set, guaranteed, because you're getting systems expertise last. You, it's not guaranteed, but you've got the core four skills. So it doesn't matter too much. You, probably going to have to fire you in the long term, not in the, you know, eventually. For now, this is good, but the lack of combat endurance is going to, that's not going to be very nice for longer battles. Let's see. You're looking good, you're looking good. Of course, Paragons, getting the, when you don't want systems expertise or missile spec, getting the ship to have the right set of skills is a pain. It's a huge pain. So they've got three good ones so far. But the odds of them getting the last two that I want, not very good. Even with the ability to re-roll the skills using Mentor. Because right? we want Helms and Ship, and we want Target Analysis. And for you, Field Modulation and Helms and Ship. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Alright. A Medusa would be nice. We've got Fury. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Unfortunately. Officer? What do you got? Energy weapon mastery. Why is everyone reckless? Reckless this, reckless that. I'm not really looking for reckless officers. This isn't a safety override run. That being said, energy weapon mastery field modulation. I don't think I want energy weapon mastery on anything. Yeah, I think I'm just not going to take... Well, I'm going to hire him and fire him because there is actually a limit. I did check the files and found out that I was right. There is a limit to the number of officers who can exist at the same time in the sector. You know, I, I suspected that was the case, but looking into the files, that is actually true. So if you see a, an officer with a skill set that you never plan to use, hiring them and firing them actually opens up a spot for new officers to spawn. That is, that is actually what you're supposed to do. Well, I don't think that's what you're supposed to do, but if you want to get your right officers, that's what you should do. Okay. Oh, yeah, and somebody, you know, a few people have been mentioning, like, oh, you know, remember Alpha Site? You should go back there, because you might find a few things that you like. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yes, I know about the weapons cache. I just, I understand not everyone has the time to watch every single video to completion. So let me be clear. I've already done that. I did that long before I did the main quest line or dealt with the ziggurat. That's why I have the shock repeater. I didn't get much else that I wanted, though. I don't have much use for a rift lance, although it might be fun to try sticking it on this thing. I don't have much use for... Uh, what else was there? Well, there's the disintegrator. That was the medium weapon I got. Really don't, really don't care for the disintegrator. Yeah, obviously a cryo blaster would be great. Resonators are pretty good, but yeah, no, don't need that. All right, I do have two story points, and I'm pretty close to earning another one. So yeah, let's go ahead and slap on some missile auto loaders. Or do I want to S mod the Medusas? Now we'll do the Omens first. They've been here since the beginning. They're old. They're you know reliable. All reliable. Actually, I might be better off S-modding the built-in stuff because that gives you more bonus XP. Although, that's not really going to be an issue. That's not going to be an issue for a while because you get a bunch of bonus XP when you hit max level, basically. Right, I'm level 15, so I've got, yeah, 240 million bonus experience. So, running out of bonus XP is not really a concern right now. I'm not worried about that. I did just spend my last story point, but we're about to earn one very, very soon, so I am I should be fine. Alright, let's talk to our friend. He's right here. So, I we've already had this conversation. Why can I have this conversation a second time? That's a bit weird. A bounty docket, challenging target. What have you got? Oh, interesting. 
That's a lot of those. And only this one seems to have an AI core. If they've got no AI cores, then that seems pretty easy. What are your other targets? Yeah, obviously I'm not going to do that. Continue. That's a lot closer. But yeah, let's do the more challenging one. Look at that. Almost 300,000 credits for all of that. Let's go ahead. Special Pirate Bounty Fleet. No, okay, this is... No, okay, this isn't like a special fleet. This is a system bounty, I think. No, I don't want that. Luxury good. I need 1,000 units. All right, let's do that. That's really close. Surplus heavy machinery. Can let you have it at set. That's pretty good. But I'm not going to be doing that. So let's just move on. Okay, I do believe... No, you don't take AI cores. I... No, I don't want to do that. Why is it... Why is that first? It... That's awful. That's awful that it's first. That it's taken up the spot where you, you sort of reflexively click one if you want to look at AI cores. That That's not good. You can accidentally give away a planet killer. That would be very bad. All right. Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll just do this very real quick. Got plenty of cargo space for it. So I'm... Okay, so I actually have to procure it myself. I see. Well, how hard can that be? And then I've got to go there. All right. So we'll do all of that. Then we'll go home. We'll start up another colony. We'll clean up Task Force Safeguard. Recover some of those ships. Maybe include some of them into the fleet. And then we'll go explore Limbo. Because I'm sure people want to see that. All right, if we're, and also we can buy a Medusa while we're at it. I would like to try them out as escorts. Some people have definitely experimented with it. It seems like it could be good. Although exactly which destroyer ends up being the best escort, ideally, ideally, every destroyer would have its day. You know, every dog would have its day. Each one of them should have like a unique niche where they're the most useful. But it could be the case that one of them is just the best. Like, it might be the case that the best one is just slapping a high-intensity laser on the Sunder with a couple of IR auto lances and just letting it melt hull and having it act as a support ship in that way. That might just be the best. Or it might be the case that you know, maybe Manticore is the best because it can mount on a bunch of long-range kinetics. So it gets the best of both worlds. It gets a bunch of... It gets good shield DPS, but then it also gets a large weapon that can do armor and hull damage. It might, you know, ideally there wouldn't be a clear best, but we'll see. We will see. All right, so I do have a couple ways to buy a Medusa. Is this really a military planet? This is a pretty small selection for a military. Usually there's a lot more. I mean, I could even buy an Astral or a Doom, and that's cool. I'm just going to buy the Medusa, though. That's what I'm looking for. And we're going to move you up here. Awesome. Yeah, so we've got... Speaking of, I do want to grab... I guess I could grab... Yeah, that's... I could just grab, like, a sixth monitor... A sixth omen. Right, because... The plan is to have 20 points left over. So that I can have, like, an eagle with a mercenary officer... Or, depending on what I get from Task Force Safeguard, I could recover a 14 Eagle that then takes an AI core. I could jam an Alpha Core in there. And for some reason, I was thinking that I would get like a Pirate Afflictor, because that's perfectly 6 DP. But, wait a minute, Omens are also 6 DP. I could just do that. Or I could grab a Monitor. Especially now that Monitors aren't as crazy. 
they're a lot less crazy. Now, having a single afflictor in your fleet is pretty good because it can, at the even without, even without phase call tuning, it's still pretty good because it can just sprint across the map to grab a capture point, which is really uh, obviously very useful. And then on top of that, even if it's not doing a lot of damage, it can hang out near your other ships and spam its system to boost friendly damage. So and contributing quite a bit. On the other hand. Grabbing a monitor is a very good distraction. Even though they don't get safety overrides, you can't put safety overrides on them anymore. Which is, I think, fair. I, I, from what I've seen, people have demonstrated that even without safety overrides, the monitor is still very durable. It's still very good. It's just that safety overrides made it ridiculous. Yeah, I think that's the plan. I think I'm going to go with the monitor. Grab a couple of those. Uh, I'll just leave that. We'll slap that back there. A couple of light needlers, which Tritacon has for some reason. Or maybe, yeah, there was none on the black market. So they, sometimes I guess Tritac uses light needlers. You know, fair enough. They are good. All right, let's grab the right hull mods. Escort package and shield conversion front. Actually, if anything, what I should have done is instead of getting those auto loaders, I should have put S mods onto the Medusa so they could have 360 degree shields. Oh well. I can do that once I get more story points. It's not like there's a big rush. Speaking of, we can move you up here, although there's the slight issue that you're reckless. You know, one teeny tiny problem. But I'm also going to be using you as an escort, so the reckless behavior is not going to be as big of an issue. In fact, it might even be better. It's hard to say. We'll have to find out. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what I want here. Don't really need anything else. Except maybe luxury goods, if you got any. Yeah, you've got a few. I'm mostly doing this mission for the reputation rather than the money. And I need to get like a thousand of these. So, let's head over here. Actually, let me just look where a good place to buy them is. This is the easy way to do it. Kanta's Den. They have an excess of 1,000 luxury goods. Oh right, that makes sense because they have light... Kanta's Den of course has light industry because they produce drugs. Obviously. I kind of forgot about that. That that is how that works. If you're making drugs, you're also making consumer goods. Just like in real life. That's not how it works in real life. But this is video game. Jump point. Alright. Yeah, no, well, I should actually check if there's any bounties nearby my target. I could definitely grab this one on the way back. Very carrier-focused fleet by the looks of it. Two herons, two moras. And then they've got Griffin, Fury, Sunder. Upwards of 20 other ships. Yeah, that's a lot of small ships. But being an independent bounty, they don't tend to have capital ships. It's quite rare. All right, of course, they're still here. That's right. I just went through the gate system in order to go to Galatia. So, of course, all the mercenaries that were hunting for me are still here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I only need 1,000. So we're going to drop until we have 1,000. That seems right. Yeah, that's like a... That's a it's a lot of luxury goods. That's perfect. That is exactly what I needed in this specific situation. Thank you, pirates. That's very generous of you. Officer? Yeah, no, I don't need you. But I'm going to hire you. I'm going to fire you. You can hit the streets. You're out of a job. I mean, they do take a little bit of money up front, but the money is... It's nothing. Like, the amount of money they take up front is... 
I think it's less than the amount of money they charge per month, honestly. It's really not much. It's the kind of thing that you, you know, very, very early game, you don't want to do that, but past that, you can afford to just do that. So, wait, how do I do the contract? Is there, uh, there we go. Deliver the goods. Bada bing, bada boom. That's cash. And reputation, right? Oh wait, it was in this text here. I was looking for how much reputation I got. But I could always click on him. Yeah, we're up to 16. Crazy. I think we've got to get up to like above 75. So this is going to take a while. Got to go over to the crony system. A system full of cronies. So this is a... This guy's a mob boss. Actually, this is... You know, considering that the artist for Star Sector I, I did base one of the portraits in the game off of George Orwell, I strongly suspect that he based this portrait off of Michio Kaku. Like, I, I don't think that that's a stretch to say that. I, he's got exactly the same hair. Like, come on. There's, you, there's no way. You cannot convince me otherwise. Ain't no way that's not intentional. Yellow primary star. That's like half of them. Alright. Cryovolcanic. Do you, well, let's have a look. Terran. Terran. Desert. So it's not this one. Actually, how good are these planets? Pretty good. Look at that. It's actually pretty not. That's uh, actually pretty solid. Let's see. What about over here? Cryovolcanic. Well, there's this one. There's actually a gate here, but I haven't scanned it. So going here is a good idea, anyways, to activate the gate. I hold on tab. And this one I've not explored yet, so it could still be this one. We'll find out when we get there. Because that's an orange giant, which means I can use that for slip search. Which is perfect. That's what we like to see. At some point, I may want to drop my Tritachion commission, because I am making plenty of cash off my colonies. And being not at war with other factions randomly would be nice. Wait, okay, hold on. There we are. Let's get this going. Zoom. Yeah, that was worth it. I was a little worried that because the jump size is smaller compared to like a black hole, that that the uh, stopping there would actually not be worth it. I was a little worried about that, but it looks like it was definitely worth it. Yeah, there's like everything's under control of pirates. Well, first let's activate the gate. This is probably where the bounty is. And if I want to, I can just take the gate somewhere. Let's see. Hmm. You know what? This is pretty close to the bounty. Yeah, I can use this black hole to jump down here. And then I can jump over here, activate this gate. And then I can use the gate to go home. Well, I might have to stop by the core worlds first to get more fuel, but... That's the idea. But, you know, that's just like a... A pit stop in between. I can gate to the core worlds and then gate home. You know, it's not that... It's not that... It's the same thing with an extra step. 9% bonus XP. Yeah, I think we're fine. So, you go there, you go there. Alright, oh, I didn't end up buying the monitor. That's what I was... That's what I was thinking about and then didn't do. I now remember that. I can always buy it later, though. It's not like I'm in immediate need of a... of an extra ship. There's a lot of good options for ships at 6 DP, as it turns out. You've got the Omen, you've got the Monitor, you've got Pirate Afflictor. I wouldn't do Pirate Shade, though. For, like, if you're paying the same ordinance points for a Shade and an Afflictor, the Afflictor's better. 
Mike, you know, people will say that the, uh... People will say that the Archimeter is, like, really cool in the shade because it uses it offensively, but... Guys, the Omen uses it offensively, too. The, the, right, the, right, the problem with the Archimeter on the shade is it doesn't really work well with the... with the phase. Because when you go into phase, it shut like what you want to do is you want to sit next to the enemy for several seconds for the full to get the full value out of its duration. That's what you want to do. The problem you run into with phase is that you activate it, then the enemy points their guns at you, and then you phase to dodge, and so your system just kind of doesn't end up doing anything. Now, obviously, that doesn't happen all the time, but compare that to an open where that happens zero percent of the time. Right, an omen just sits next to the enemy and is able to do that because it's tanky with its shield. Right, a shade runs into the issue that in order to survive if the enemy shoots at them, they kind of have to stop using their system. So it, it, they kind of work counter to each other. It's not terrible, but compare that to a pirate afflictor, or I guess even a regular afflictor, with their system. Well, that system's just always good, even on a phase ship. Even if it activates, if it goes immediately back into phase, it's still buffing the damage of your allies. I like how the, somehow this Fury is the only one way out here, and the Omen that was capturing this point actually got ahead of it. Alright, you can do that, and I'm going to come back over here. You know what? I didn't even consider that they might have, like, a Hyperion. But yeah, that is in theory, a way to make their fleets a lot scarier without giving them capital ships. What are you doing? It, it jumped and fired all of its weapons at nothing. Wait, does this have a PCL? It does. It actually had a, par a, a charge launcher. Man, this thing is scared. It keeps, like, firing and immediately jumping away before actually doing anything. Well, now that its engines are out, it should be scared. You tried to jump at just the wrong time, and my anti-guide blasters just got it. Yeah, that was a very brief window where the shields go down because it tries to jump. I'd like to say that I did that on purpose, but I don't think that it's realistic for a human being to react that fast. So a lot of mid-game bounties are really good for credits. I mean, look how easy this is. I guess we're, we're kind of heading towards later in the game. But the... We're going to pretend that didn't happen. But the idea still stands, right? These, these bounties we could do earlier in the game. We could do bounties at this level in the mid-game. Like, look how easy this is. It'd be a little more challenging in the mid-game. But you could definitely still do it without losses. And it would make you a lot of cash for that stage of the game. As well as XP. I didn't end up doing that in this playthrough too much. I didn't... And normally, I think the, the, the flow would be like early game black market trading, into exploration missions, into doing tons of bounties. Things went a little differently this time. And then once you, you know, once you've done a ton of bounties, you've got a bunch of cash, then you start spamming colonies. Or at least that's the, that's the way that kind of balances progression without being too boring. You know, it balances your XP gain with, with your money gain with... I guess the only thing about it is you end up starting colonies a bit late. Alright, we've got an Aurora Blueprint. That's cool. Alright, so, black hole time. I'd love to scan it and get some topographic data, but that's kind of pointless at this stage. The thing about topographic data... Is two is you, you need to earn three hundred points just to get the data. Yeah, I think that a topographic data would be more interesting if you didn't just earn it at the end, but also you earned it every time you unlocked an ability, right? When you get slipstream navigation, bam, you also get a unit of topographic data. You unlock this thing, boom, you get another one. You unlock this thing, you get another one, and then also you can unlock them at the end, right? Just just getting them at the end feels like a weird sort of tacked on inclusion but if you're also getting them as little treats along the way I think that could work although it is basically just free cash for something you're doing anyways 
But the game gives you lots of free cash, so I don't think that that's too much of an issue. Yeah. Hey, look, both of the Furies managed to out-damage this Paragon, at least, in terms of hull damage, which is the most important one for uh, pro rata DP calculations. That's the one that's considered the most. In fact, both of them ended up getting higher overall, probably because they tanked a lot more damage. 33, 28 versus 0 and 3%. All right, let's go over to this black hole, and let's slingshot ourselves. So I need to make sure I'm aiming correctly, which means pointing at that. So I have a good idea of how to, how to line this up. There we go. Yeah, and that's, that's about the perfect distance. Nice. And of course, this isn't going to tell you where it is. That's the one thing that's annoying about contact bounties. I mean, it, it makes sense that a fleet wouldn't just be hanging around a specific spot waiting for you to get them. That makes sense. It's just annoying to go searching for them. Alright, where are you guys? Let's play a little hide and seek. Nope, that's the wrong button. This is the one I was looking for. Although, I have... Do, would new trainer detectors even point at a fleet? I have no idea. Okay, so this is Scythe 6. And what I've learned about Ludic Majority... I, don't, I still f don't fully understand how it works, but what I've learned is that if you build industries they don't like... Wait, it gives plus 30 population growth at size 6? How pointless. It, I guess it gives 5 times the colony size. Now, if you could hit size 7, that would be useful. Anyways, what I've learned is that if you build an industry they don't like, then you lose the bonus. Not exactly how that sh how sh how that worked. Like, do they disappear over time? All I've been told is that they the bonus disappears, and that they will tolerate farming, light industry, and commerce, and apparently nothing else. So this that means that at size six, you you so you've got a couple of options with Ludic Majority. You can use it early on, and uh, to get that massive population growth, and then once you hit size six, kind of abandon them and build something else. That's one way to use it, or you can you can skip that fourth industry slot and keep the stability and production bonus for farming and light industry. Which, I'm not exactly sure which choice would be better. Uh, probably, probably building a, an extra industry is better overall because getting extra production is not super useful. Right, going from times seven food output to times eight, that's, that's actually not that important. Going from times four drugs, you know, four to times five and that's not a big deal either so i guess it depends more on how much you need that stability which for a free port with commerce that's actually if you know you you actually do need that's you do need that stability pretty badly so i'll leave it alone for now in the future we'll see i might i might abandon because i don't think it's reversible i think once you lose ludic majority you can't you can't like remove the industry to get it back so I'm tempted to build a fourth industry because I do want to mine the organics to fuel, to fuel light industry, which apparently the Ludic majority doesn't understand. Like, hey, if you're going to be doing light industry, the, the, the raw material has to come from somewhere. And they're like, yeah, I get that. But I, yeah, I get that. But I just don't want it to be here. Okay. I just don't want it to be here. You can get the raw material or, or, or whatever from anywhere else in the sector. Not my problem, but I don't want it here. And it's like, all right. I get it. Okay, Ludic Majority, they're basically Karens. It's a population of Karens. But so, but instead of reducing stability, they increase stability. So, unlike unlike a, a community of Karens, there would be a reason to keep them around. Anyone named Karen, I do apologize. I've, I've met some very lovely Karens in my life. You know how, it's just the way it is, you know? That's just the way it is. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be spending all my supplies on this because I really can't afford to do that. Yeah, I just got to look around, I guess. Probably should be flying around probably closer to the center of the system. Actually, there was one time where there was where I did the... Well, I've only really done the Tesseract Super Alabaster Omega Bounty once. 
And I almost missed out because it has a limited time, or at least at, at least in that version it had a limited time. I don't know. They might have removed the time limit. Uh, I think people have suggested that, so I don't know if they actually implemented that. But there's a limited amount of time for you to do the bounty, and I almost missed it because I just couldn't find the fleet. It was in a super... a blue super giant system. So that... there was a lot of places it could have been. And I could not find it. Alright, where are they hiding? Yeah, this isn't going to point towards any fleets. It's only going to point towards, like, celestial bodies and stuff. Hey, there we go. And they've even got tons... Of, okay, so they all do have Gamma Cores. That makes sense. It was a bit weird because the bounty information only showed one Gamma Core. But maybe that's because it only shows you the Admiral for the fleet. Right, if I check here... Yeah, see? One, two, three, four, five, six... So it shows it on the sixth one. If we look here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, the one with the star, that's the admiral. So this only shows you the admiral, it doesn't show you any other officers. And they have derelict. I am assuming they have derelict operations if they have that many D mods. All right, let's go for it. It's only a dangerous three, it's three stars. Easy. We don't actually get to deploy everything. Crazy. Yeah, one of these reckless, so I've got to keep you guys leashed. It's for your own good, trust me. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Probably better to pat you there. Just to make sure, well, derelicts aren't exactly fast. So let's do that. This should be fine. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, we're we're doing good. Although to be fair, I don't actually need all of them. I only need enough to deploy that. It's probably fine if I change this over to a defense order like that. Yeah, that should be good. The nice thing about deploying the Fury Last, of course, is that it gets it catches up pretty quickly. In fact, it might get to the battle before the Paragons do, even though they were deployed at the start. Yeah, balancing fleet speed can be interesting at times, because you want fast ships deployed at the start in order to capture the points, but then you want the ships that you deploy later on also need to be fast, so they don't take forever to get to the battle. So you need some fast ships at the start, and some fast ships at the end. Or you could just do all fast ships, which is, of course, the, just the best option. So we've got a need for speed. Alright, let's take over you. Really? Of course the AI is going to fire a Reaper at that. Of course it would. If I was the AI in that situation, I would do the same thing. Because I would have no free will. I'd be a, a robot. Well, not even a robot, really. It's more like an algorithm. Calling it an AI is really a misnomer. Although exactly what you would call it, I'm not really sure. What would be the accurate term? Just calling it an algorithm sounds a bit too technical. Hey buddy. I'm noticing a distinct lack of kinetics. Well, your friend has a squall, so I guess that helps. Yeah, compared to the, uh, this is, in terms of difficulty, this is, seems like it's pretty comparable to the old, uh, mothership, isn't it? But that was a long time ago. This is now. This is like, this is many hours later. And the rewards are going to be less, too. It's just going to, well, to be fair, getting money from a, a mothership early on would be really nice. It's just that, you know, 300,000 credits compared to getting a colony item. What's good for you in the long term? Probably the colony item. Even if the, in the short term getting that massive injection of cash would make your early game a lot easier. Let's 
Okay, let's see what you're doing. Nothing. Gotcha. I guess it is a defense order, and there's no enemies nearby, so that kind of makes sense. And you can take care of that. Look at that, he's not getting himself killed. Well, he's certainly trying. He is a reckless officer. If they're not at least trying, then they're not doing their job. Alright, perfect. You gotta remember that missiles add on your ship's momentum to them. At least at first. They, like, if you have momentum that's going sideways compared to the missile's trajectory, it'll have that momentum at the start when you launch it, but then it'll decelerate so that it's only traveling forward. So getting the exact... So if you're traveling sideways, trying to get your missile shot just right can be a bit difficult for that reason. And that's why the AI often messes it up. Alright, easy. Nine, nine raspberry pies. That's that's a decent injection of cash. On top of the money we get for doing the bounty. And of course, it's only worth three points of reputation. You know, it'd be nice if it was worth a little more. Someone actually had suggested that I could buy a venture, rename it ISS Hamatsu, and see if the and see if that tricks her. That would be funny. Depending, like, that might actually be the way the game is programmed, where it just checks if it's the right ship with the right name. 51,000. Very cool. Okay. So now we want to go to the gate. And we can do that using a slingshot, although we are going to have to use the S key here because it's going to be too fast. Give me a level 7 officer right now. Damn it. I was hoping that shouting at them would work. I, I was hoping that if I just told the game what I wanted, that it would work. It didn't work. But maybe if I, maybe I just need to keep trying at it. Oof. Still overshot it a little bit. That's a black hole for you. All right, let's get over here. Gates, here we come. Yeah, I'm pretty short on supplies. Oh, I, I've definitely been to this system before, of course. I just need to... Well, first, I will do survey here. We'll stop the repairs so that I have enough. Yeah, there's a, there's ruins here. Let's do this. Massive ruins. That's pretty good. I mean, I've already got a pristine nanoforge and a corrupted nanoforge, so you're third on the list. But more is more good. That's what I always say. So let's see... Yeah, this is plus two farmland, or plus two organics, vast ruin. Yeah, this is really good. And there's a gate in the system. I think what I could do is, yeah, I could put mining here, which would be, I mean, compared to the one that I have in my other system, this is way better. Like, why would I do mining there for just some basic level of organics, which would then ruin Ludic Majority, when I could do the mining here, get even more organics, and get common ore? And then also if I find soil nanites, that would be perfect for this planet. Which is why it's a bit weird that it gave me a, a nanoforge instead of soil nanites. If it gave me soil nanites right here, I would, I would just colonize it on the spot, really. That way, she's like, all right, farming, let's go. We'll use a lot of majority to get up to size six really fast, and then we'll build mining. And then this would just be awesome. It would be so awesome. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right away. We will probably come back, though. Because I do need to get organics from somewhere. Am I over capacity? Hold on. Yeah, let's dump that. So there's a fleet out here. There's a weapons cache. I mean, I, I wouldn't have found this weapons cache if not for the fact that you're hovering around for some reason. Hey, bud, what you doing? Probably hostile, if I had to guess, with the way, based off your movements. Yeah. Scavenger. They don't like it when you scavenge things. But they also can't stop me. So I guess it sucks to suck. Alright, we can turn repairs back on. W. Hey, hold on. What's all this? Alright. 
If anyone happens to have a level 7 officer, now would be the time to come forward. Is it you? No. They're out there somewhere. Organs. You got my hopes up for a second. But I got three organs. Pod? Administrator? Yucky. I don't need those. At least not yet. There's not really any downside to using alpha cores, but maybe I should just not anyways? I... I don't know. Can I actually reach there? Feel required? Oh, I can just barely get all the way across the sector. Very cool. Just barely enough fuel. In fact, I probably got... Oh, right, and I also have to get home from here. Let's not forget that. And I definitely don't have enough fuel to do that. Okay. It's time for a distress signal. In a neutron star system where there's going to be this big old beam blasting everything. And we're running out of supplies because of the beam and I had everything repairing. Life is suddenly not looking good, actually. Oh, please get out of the beam before, before they show up. Pretty please. But I do need somebody to show up. Like soon. Like now. I know I'm at the edge of the sector, so there's probably not going to be much. But, come on. And I am near the... Oh, are you kidding me? There's other jump points. It's right. That's a problem, because they might show up at the other jump points. Don't even need to e-burn. It's, it's that simple. Man, this system is complicated. Yes, there it is. Okay, perfect. It's my own... Look at that. Bingus Domain Fast Picket. Glory to the Bingus Domain. Ladies and gentlemen, we have saved ourselves. It's the opposite of playing ourselves. Lieutenant M Mel Greenish. You're getting a promotion. Of course, we barely get anything, naturally. I can improve my reputation with my own fleet commanders. Not that that matters, because they won't exist for very long. Uh, that, yeah, that's still not enough to actually reach anything. Obviously. Because, because why would the game give you enough supplies and fuel? Why would it do that? That would be silly. That would just be nonsense. Imagine giving the player the, the resources they need when they're in a desperate situation. I wouldn't be, couldn't be me. And of course, once you take, once you get a distress signal, the next one takes ages for the next fleet to show up, so I'm probably just going to die. And this fuel range is even worse than it looks because I have to pay fuel to go into hyperspace. Yeah, this is why you want, even though the gate is right next to my system, this is kind of why you want it right in the system. But don't worry, we'll be fixing that soon enough. I've got two million credits. Just show up and, like, sell me fuel. Damn. Hello? Anybody? I don't think I can get there. It's hard to tell because, well, this is just what the game map looks like. Maybe if I went to that jump point, maybe I'd be close enough that I could fall into this system, but I don't want to take that risk. I really don't. And here comes the beam once again to ruin everything. If a fleet pops out while the beam is pointing at it. Yeah, and of course we're getting accidents now, so mothball all this. Life has gone from being very good to being very bad very quickly. I've got cash, I've got money. Please, for the love, just show up. Some this is this is not good. One fleet shows up, gives you like five, it gives you like fifty fuel, which is not enough to even. That's like a quarter of the distance to the nearest star system, and then nothing shows up for like m several minutes. What is this? Why is it designed like this? Hello. I've got plenty of cash and nothing to do with it. 
give me like a merchant fleet or something. Like give me give me like a scavenger fleet who's here to just who just goes around selling fuel or something. I don't care. Just give me something. Oh, this sucks. Unless they're like at a different jump point for no reason. I don't know why though. They should consistently show up at the same jump point. From what I understand. Yeah, they're not over here. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. This is not good. Hello, game, 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 video game, hello. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it. I think this is poorly designed. You, you, like, thank you. Okay. Did I manifest it into existence? There we go. Look at, see, look at that. 700 fuel. Look at that. All right, now we're starting to have some malfunctions. Oh, good. Uh, if we do that, we won't have enough space for everything. Okay. That being said, we do have some supplies, so we can afford to repair you, which means we won't run into issues with you. We just got to dump a bit of metals. Simple as. So why didn't Why didn't something like that show up the first time? That was That was ill considered. It seems like Distress Beacon goes on a long cooldown after a fleet shows up, before it becomes useful again. But then the first fleet that they send is useless. That's... That's not... That's not balanced. That needs to be fixed. Alright. Problem solved. Now we have tons of fuel and supplies, and we're sitting on 2 million credits. Life is good. Once again, life... Life is good. Alright, how many story points we got? Two. Okay. So yeah, we could get those. Uh, we don't have enough supplies to repair a fleet, I guess. Let's get more. And let's sell this stuff, because we don't need it. In fact, let's sell some of this. Keep 150. And we'll sell this. And let's buy more supplies. Spending a lot of cash on this. Alright. 686 supplies to repair everything. Oh boy. Wait, how much do I have? Oh, I'm sitting on 2,000. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's almost enough to go exploring the abyss, really. That being said, I'm not going to be doing that immediately. I do want to clear out Task Force Safeguard, and I do want to start up a second colony. But we'll get to that. We will get to that very soon. So we want to carry around this. We can drop that off. Look at that. Very nice. So ideally, our next colony... Well, our first colony is going to be a no atmosphere, so we can take make the best use out of this, this. And then that will also mean that it's not habitable, so we can slap on a pristine nanoforge without any consequence. And then also, if we can find a mantle... If we can find, like, a mantle bore, then mining would also be really good. As a matter of fact... You can make kind of the perfect fortress world. Now, you don't need to do this, of course. Even if it, the option is available to you. It's not necessary. But it is really cool, so I'm going to talk about it. Where you have no atmosphere, and you have access to all three of these. That's the first thing you need. Then the next thing you need is extreme heat for the military base. And, the, and then finally, you need to be within range of a hyper shunt. Because what that does for you is that at size 6... With the Hypershunt tap, you can have five industries. One of them is going to be the military base with the extreme heat cryorhythmic engine to make it maximum power. The, of course, the problem with that is that the military base needs fuel and it needs the outputs of heavy industry in order to function. And those can be disrupted through trade. So then what you want to do is you want to build heavy industry on the planet and you want to build a fuel production facility so that it can supply those directly instead of needing shipping. So now it can't be disrupted. Ah, but the inputs for heavy industry and fuel production can be disrupted, which would lower their output, which would then indirectly disrupt your military base. 
So now, not only do you need the production facilities, you need the whole supply chain on the same planet, which is possible if you have everything that I said. It is possible. Because with five industries, you can have one for the military base, one for the orbital works, one for fuel production, one for the refinery, and one for mining. Because the mining will put out transplutonics, common ores, and volatiles. The volatiles will go to fuel production, and then that will be fed into the military base. So that's one, two, three. And then these two will get fed into the refinery, which is industry four. And then that will get fed into the heavy industry, which is industry five. And then that will get fed into the military base. And so what you end up with, with those five industries, if you have all three ore types, and you're in range of the hyper shunts, you can actually get five industries, is that the whole supply chain for the military base is completely on the same planet, so it cannot be disrupted. And then, of course, ideally, you would want no atmosphere, so you can use cry, so you can use the synchrotron core and catalytic core to maximize output. Then you can use the mantle bore drill to maximize mining output, and you could, and you would want extreme heat for the cryorhythmic engine in the military base. It would, it's just kind of like the perfect setup. You don't need that, but it is really cool to think about. If someone could pull that off, uh, I'd like to see it. It'd be really cool. Not to mention that the, the transplutonics that you need to fuel the hypershunt tap, you could supply them on the planet itself because it has transplutonics and you, you're putting a mantle bore onto it. So, you know, maybe, maybe you need to put in a story point and an alpha core to get the... and maybe, like, do all of that to get the supply high enough, but you could do it. And then once you've got the supply high enough, then the fact that it's got the transplutonics on the planet itself, once again... You cannot disrupt the the transplutonic supply and hurt the uh, and hurt the industry because what happens is I've not seen this, but what I've been told is that if you have a hypersion tap and then your transplutonic needs fall short, you still get to keep the fifth industry. But what happens is you get minus five stability for being over your industry cap. That's pretty bad. So you really don't want to be using a hypersion tap on a planet that can't supply that itself. Because then you're going to periodically get minus 5 stability anytime transplutonic shipments are disrupted. But with this military base, that would not be, like this fortress planet, that would be not an issue. That would be very cool. Alright, so we're going to colonize this. Even though, unfortunately, it's not extreme heat and the hypershunt tap is here, or the hypershunt. Anyway, that's 13 light years away, so just a little bit too far to do what I said. Unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Okay, storage, let's take some of this fuel. We can sell this, and there's a bunch of crew. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. And we can sell this, of course. Speaking of, we are going to need that. I think we need even more. I think we actually need... I think you need a thousand, although you do get some on site. Oh, wait, no, hold on. I'll leave those here and I'll sell these. Perfect. Yeah, okay, that looks good. And we want to re remove this because we're not under attack. And we don't need the off core in the station. In fact, what we need it is probably going to be over here. Pursuing Ludic Pilgrims. What? I see commerce raiders. They're friendly, supposedly. But why is there a league enforcer? Hold on, let me establish this colony. What do you want? I mean, I know why they're here. I just don't know why they're pursuing me, specifically. Like, what are they going to have to talk about? They're just going to be like, hey, join the league. No. You're going to regret this. And then go home whining. Alderaan's... Stronghold. I don't know who Alderaan is. But this is his stronghold. Maybe I could put an administrator here named Alderaan. Caron Laurier? I could name you Alderaan. That would be funny. 
Yeah, let's do that. I mean, paying twenty thousand monthly salary so that you can have, uh, so that you can have, the uh, the industry skill really isn't worth it. You know, you can keep your last name, but your first name's got to change. You're Alderon now. Alderon Stronghold, administrated by Alderon. That's that's brilliant, really. Gotta love that. Okay, so we're gonna go with heavy industry first so I can get some custom production in the faction. That would be very nice. So I can't do that until this is finished. And I, yeah, we'll just leave that as is. All right, let's give it one second. Comply with the expression. As the apparent representative of a non-league entity and a non-signatory of the Persian Sector Commercial Standards Accord, you are hereby ordered to stand down your weapons. Prepare to be boarded. We're here to make sure you're civilized. Spacer, open up. Sure. Yeah, they're going to do some classic banging up your ships and draining combat readiness to punish you for existing. Classic move. Wait, does that actually boost stability or accessibility even before it's finished? No, it doesn't. Okay. No, it just removes all of the... It just reduces the demand to zero. I see. That's what it's doing. But yeah, we're going to want that regardless. Get that accessibility up. I think that's probably always kind of the, the safest place to put an alpha core. Right in the spaceport. 25% or 20% accessibility. And unlike an administrator can't cause you problems because you can always take it out if you want. At least that's what I think. I think that's the best place to put it first. Plus, I can't name an alpha core, unfortunately. I can't just give them the name Alderaan. That would be kind of cool, though, if I could do that. But, you know, alpha cores are items, so that would probably be a nightmare in terms of coding how to make that work. Yeah, all right, I think that's everything I need to do for now. I don't need to do anything else with this colony. Got to repair my ships a little bit. Crew is a l just barely above the... Your fleet does not require any repairs. What? Oh, it's because you... Weird. All right. So it says they're friendly, but they're a commerce raider. Would attacking them be bad? That's kind of my que That's kind of what I'm left thinking. Is attacking them bad, or is that fine? I, I'm not going to test that for now, although maybe I should talk to them. Maybe I should just have a little chat. We're in the middle of contract operations. Don't waste my time. Okay. I mean, having like triple S mods and everything is definitely not normal. Alright, well, let's move on. Let's go get this asteroid field. I think it canceled. It looks like I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Hold on. Let's do that. Right click. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you guys are investigating. Look how big and important you are. Although compared to the Pather fleets, they should be stronger. I should also be stronger, so it's probably fine. Right, and I also want to do those extended shields. I guess I'll get to that in a minute. I'm not in any rush. Task Force Safeguard at this point should be pretty easy to take care of. And then after that, we can explore the Abyss. That'll be so cool and fun. Remember, ab Abyssal Horrors, fun for the, they're fun for the whole family. Just don't stare at the lights too long. I hear it's bad luck. What else have we got going on? Lots of bounties that I don't seem to care about. Don't think I'm going to be doing any survey missions. 40,000 credits, really. What nonsense. I've got better things to do with my time, don't you understand? Alright. Let's clean these out. No bonus XP. It's going to be easy. Okay, so you guys... Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Quick maths. 
Simple as. What? So I can click that, but it doesn't actually do anything because I'm selected on multiple ships. That's weird. I'm not sure why it would be designed that way. Now, of course, Task Force Safeguard is not known for having fast ships, so these points are going to be entirely uncontested. Yeah, people have asked what makes the Medusa so much better in the last couple of patches that wasn't there before. And I think it was the Medusa even before Escort Package came out, which is obviously going to make Destroyers better. I think last patch it was really good. Partly because S, the, you know, the S mod bonuses came out, which meant you could now get 360 degree shields, making it much safer. But on top of that, you know, a lot of its weapon selection got better. Right, that was when the, the new Mining Blaster got introduced, which it likes. That's when the Kinetic Blaster got introduced, which it really likes. I mean, it, 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 I don't end up using the Kinetic Blaster, but, you know, now it's easier to find a build for it. So weapons got, weapon selection got improved, and extended shields, S mod allowed it to get that full 360 degree coverage. I think just the combinations, because it, it already had a lot of potential. I mean, it's a destroyer with good flux stats and a really good system. I mean, slap on systems expertise, quite good. It's just that now it's finally got the tools that it needs to actually succeed in a battle. Right, and this thing's got dual flak, so missiles getting through is going to be a bit of a challenge. There we go. Right, let's try not to uh, overload to those Gauss Cannon. Is it just one? No, it's two. Alright. We can, we can drop that, that's fine. Where's the Legion? Don't they have a Legion, or is it just, uh, is it just that I can't see it? Yeah, it's right behind them. So, of course, everybody's going this way instead of that way. I mean, this isn't a very difficult battle, so it doesn't matter too much. But it is a bit annoying. You gotta pay attention to that in the real battles. Here come the Flash Bombers. Let's try... pulling them up. So that they fire all their, their shots into the void and accomplish nothing. Perfect. How are you guys doing? Harassing. Perfect. Why is the eagle all the way down here now? Alright, you just go that way, you just go that way. Clean and simple. Target the big ones. Look at all these flash bombers. Yeah, which is, it's definitely a bit weird seeing the AI send out flash bombers from a Legion. Like, that's strange. In context, it makes sense, but it's still weird just seeing it. Alright, let's get out of here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for dissipating my hard flux. The elite bonus getting buffed probably helped me there. Just the extra 5% dissipation of hard flux probably made a difference there, if I had to guess. We both have needlers. Let's let's back off a little bit. Let's, let's get our flux down. Oh, you are fluxing out, my friend. They missed both. I can't believe the onslaught actually dodged that with its with its burn drive. That was definitely not intentional, but kind of funny. Hey, look at that. Scored an overload. Let's see if we can nail this. Nope. It's just going to move to the left. That's fine. Yeah, that's down. And this is going to be very... So that killing that, all that's left is like an enforcer and this thing. Cool. Very simple. Hey, that's my boy. Good shot. Actually, I should rename. I should be naming these ships again. 
after losing my ships in that first uh, that first time, I didn't end up naming anything. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna name all my ships. It's gonna be really cool. I think it's all these really cool. And then they died, and then I just never went back to this and named anything ever again. But I think we're at a stage in the game where I can comfortably start naming ships again. Discovered use of AI warships by 14 Flotilla. You know, it says that like it's going to matter. Like this is like a big secret that you've now got in your back pocket. Which makes sense, but unfortunately, I don't think you can actually do anything with this information right now. Oh, these require story points. So you get the capital ships regardless. Let me have a look. Do they have... No, okay, they don't have reinforced bulkheads. Well, this one does. But it looks like the onslaught doesn't. You just get it anyways. Okay. I do have exactly two story points, so maybe it's a good thing I didn't S-mod the Medusas. Because I have exactly enough to grab both of these. I'm never going to use this enforcer, obviously, but... I mean, this is a once-per-save once file opportunity. Really. Actually, out of all of them, the Enforcer ended up with the least demods. Although I wonder, so hull restoration causes ships to have fewer demods when you recover them. I wonder if you actually end up with fewer demods on these two, because you can't repair them, from what I remember. You, you can't remove demods on these, ever, so that they're just permanent. So I wonder if having hull restoration when you grab these actually makes them permanently better, because they don't have as many demods. It's possible. But it looks like the Enforcer, the one I'm going to be least interested in using, is the one that got the fewest D mods. Then these two got three, and the poor Onslaught got four. Yeah, it looks like... Alright. That's that. Oh, I forgot to drop off all the colony items at the colony that I started. Right, well I can just go do that now. We want to go back home anyways. We got a few new toys to play with. Speaking of, might be a good idea. We'll do that first. Do we, Actually, do we want to do that first? Or do I want to do this first? Yeah, we'll go with the station first. All of these have the same built, well, planetary sh shield takes longer, but everything else is 60. I will go patrol HQ. Way station. Ground defense. Of course, I don't have to queue any of these. And if, if I end up needing cash for some reason, I can just cancel one of these because they haven't even started yet. All right, I do want to upgrade this too. To get more accessibility. That being said... Huh. It's quite the cash sink, but I can definitely afford it. The only problem is... With only seven stability... I'll, I'll wait until I start building more of these before I turn on Freeport. It goes up to minus three stability, and once you drop below five, you start seeing pretty significant debuffs to income. So we're not going to do that. I might take away this Alpha Core, and because I do want to use this guy. All right, let's let's uh, mothball these for starters. So look at that, two thirty-four, and I've got nine officers, so I've got one, I can grab one more officer, shove it into like an extra omen, although I'm probably going to go with like a monitor or something. It does leave me wondering what the best ratio would it be. Would it be four omens and two monitors, or is it five omens and one monitor, or is it half and half? I don't know. I don't know what the best, what the best option is. Actually, it might be two. It might be two, because then it, instead of having just the Medusas, I could have one Medusa and one monitor escorting each Paragon. And as it turns out, the combination of Monitor plus Paragon is really good. It is very, very good. Having two ships with Fortress Shields working together like that, quite strong. So maybe in the long term, I actually want to get rid of one of these Omens. But I'm not going to do that. At least not, not for a long time. Yeah, we're going to mothball that. Uh, this guy, you're going to be part of the fleet. And actually, let's let's uh, 
let's just take all of your stuff off. There we go. What have you got in terms? Oh, right. What have you got in terms of S mods? That's kind of an odd selection. So the best way to get value out of these would be to max out both of your flux stats. But the problem with that is 70 ordinance points on just your flux stats. That's a bit. That's a lot. You've still got to get hull mods, right? You still got to get like at least hardened shields. And then you've also got to pay for all your weapons. So. I think maximum vents will make sense, but maximum caps, probably not. I think as long as we get up to like... No, oh, maybe. I mean, this is like almost... This is almost capital level flux capacity. So you slap on hardened shields as well, this is going to be very tanky. Although, unfortunately, I would really rather S-Mod extended shields and get 360 degrees rather than this. I would much rather do that. But unfortunately, I don't get a choice. Oh well. Let's slap on hardened shields while we're at it. We can worry about the weapons when we get home. Yeah, and you guys can go into storage forever. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great. I promise. I actually had my fingers crossed. I was lying. But don't tell that to the ships. They have ears everywhere. Or at least I assume that they do. Wait. I mean, the ships can operate by themselves without crew. Because it's an automated ship. How exactly does that work? Because they can operate without an AI core. They actually don't even need an AI core and they can go into battle. No crew, no AI core. So clearly there's some built-in level of AI in the ship. But then when you put in an AI core, is that like... Does the AI core become the ship itself? Or is it like working together with the built-in AI? Is it two separate entities cooperating or is it just one entity merging together? These are the real questions that need to be answered. Oh, I'm missing a lot of heavy machinery. Interesting. All right, well, that's that. Oh, officer? Nope. That's fine. But you, you surely have an officer. Of course not. You can get into it with the underworld bot. Hey, yeah, we're looking for trouble. No, we're not. Sorry. This, uh, I'm not looking for trouble. Trouble's looking for me. And I kicked his ass. Told him not to come back around these parts. He keeps showing up. What a dumbass. Oh, I see. Taking that away reduced accessibility, which then now we no longer have the requirements here, but that's going to be fine because the, the spaceport's going to upgrade anyways. And even if it doesn't... I got one story point gonna need two. Yeah, I think this is fine. The fact that the demands aren't being met doesn't matter when it's not even finished. And we'll finally have our custom production very soon. All right, I want to drop these ships off over here. That's what I was forgetting. All right, manage colony, ships. Nope, not selling them. That would be bad. That would be not what I want, as a matter of fact. Okay. Let's try, like, triple phase lance. You know, they got buffed a lot. That could be cool. Or maybe a you know, triple heavy auto cannon. There we go. Now we're cooking. Both of these just got buffed, reduced flux costs. So, that could be interesting. Slap on advanced optics, and that takes up all my ordinance points. Okay. I mean, stabilized shields can be good since you're getting 140 flux reduction for just 9. But, you know, actual flux dissipation has the advantage of working even when shields are down. And it increases venting speed, which is cool. But with no point defense and having an open, and, you know, having the shield arc not fully cover the back end. We're going to have to drop some caps. 
All right, we're going to have to drop some caps, and we're going to have to slap on some point defense. Since we've got advanced, normally on the front I would say long range PD laser, but when you've got advanced optics, because it adds a flat 200, I would think regular PD is probably better. Let's just go all in on regular PD, throw in a couple of salamanders while we're at it. Maybe they'll hit something. That'd be cool. And now we've only got nine caps. That's fine though. I'm sure that's fine. Ideally, I'm going to strip off all these get burst PDs, which will give me like two more caps, I think. Yeah, this is probably fine. Throw in a, throw in a nice alpha core. He's a little bit of a friend. He's a friendly guy. I mean, look at an alpha. Look, that's a trustworthy. That's a trustworthy shape if I've ever seen one. That's a friendly shape. It's a friend-shaped guy. Alright, probably want to go with gull that. Do I want this? Not really. With the weapons as they are, it's got in 35 vents. The, the flux is fine. I guess it's a question of what do I want to do from here. More maneuverability and impact mitigation is pretty good. But getting elite combat endurance for free, like because you get all the elite skills being an AI core, makes it tempting to go with damage control to synergize with the extra repair. But that would make me want to get reinforced bulkheads too. Or definitely getting field modulation, right? With built-in flux squad adjunct, it, it would be silly not to. That could work. Although we don't really need the reduced flux generation either. And it does need to get pretty close to actually get that extra damage, right? Because 40% puts, yeah, they have slightly over a thousand range. And a lot of the time it's gonna be firing them from max range anyways. So I'm not, I'm not sold on that. The point defense skill might actually be good. Combined with advanced optics, 50% bonus damage and another flat 200 range could make the PD lasers really good. So that's possible. Damage control is also tempting. But then, I guess really, I do want gunnery implants, even for the 1% ECM, because that, with the omens, pushes me up to 6. And then if I get a monitor with elite gunnery implants, that'll put me up to 10. And generally, you do want, with the way that ECM works now, you do at least want to hit 10. That's a good threshold. Because that, that first 10% is worth a lot, and then further investment is worth less and less. It still might be worth doing, it's just you you're spending more to get less per point like pound for pound or that first 10 you're getting a lot of value Let's see so i guess it's really a choice do i want impact mitigation getting more maneuverability and armor durability because it is a 14 ship so it's got you know 1100 armor that's not bad ballistic mastery could increase the damage for the heavy auto cannons Probably not worried about missile specialization with a couple salamanders. Systems expertise. Minus 10% damage taken is pretty cool. But the system, the, the, the main boost is not really that useful. So yeah, it's really a choice between impact mitigation, ballistic mastery, and point defense. I think I'm going to go with ballistic mastery just to do more damage. Because more damage is more good. That's the way that it is. I'm going to save this story point for now, but I, eventually I will fully integrate and then I'll be able to get... I'll be back to the choice between point defense and impact mitigation, basically. But then if I have impact mitigation, then it's really tempting. Oh, hold on. Structural damage. Oh, those are actually really bad. It's got structural damage and faulty power grid. So yeah, it's got SMOD at the flux coil adjunct and flux distributor, but it's basically counteracting the faulty power grid. And structural damage makes hull and armor much worse. So it doesn't have 1100 armor, it has 880. Ah, that's one of the worst. If it was just like degraded armor or degraded hull, then I could then I could favor one or the other. But the fact that its structural damage hits both, that's very yucky. And then reduced peak operating time too. What is its peak operating time? Yeah, it's not the end of the world, I guess. And with combat readiness, that helps a lot. But... Yeah, maybe in the end I do want to replace this with just a regular 14 Eagle with a Mercenary. It's going to cost story points to keep to upkeep the Mercenary. 
But there was also the interesting fact that, like, with mercenaries, you can kind of... You don't get to choose the skills, so instead you just pick the mercenary out, and then you try to change the loadout to match the mercenary. And and doing that could be interesting. Right? I could have, like, a bunch of different 20-DP sh ships, like Moras and Herons and Eagle and... You know, just a bunch of different ones, and then have different loadouts depending on which mercenary, like what kinds of skills the mercenaries end up with, which could be interesting. I've never really, in, I've never used mercenaries before, so I don't know if that's actually worth doing. I guess, and I want, and I'm interested in finding out. But for now, I'm going to be using this. Okay, yeah. So now it's really just got to get like a monitor. Yeah. And of course, we got to level you up. What have you got? Yeah, of course. Of course not. Naturally. You would not end up with what I want. That's to be expected. Because now we've got two skills taking up two slots, and neither of them are particularly useful. Uh, my temptation is to just quick save so that I can re-roll it. So that I can use Mentor, re-roll, and if I don't get the skill that I want reload this with a quick save and then do it again but of course I'm on iron mode so we're not going to do that for a paragon I think aggressive is good I think aggressive is good I'm actually not sure how much it matters but it's a big tanky ball that can do about do damage and take damage so aggressive getting in the enemy's face is leaning towards getting close to the enemy is probably better because it's so slow all right cross your fingers That's both of the skills I want, actually. That's good. I just need to pray that Helmsmanship shows up at the next level, because now I have no control over it. And you're close to leveling up. Very close. All right. Things are looking pretty good. Or progress is coming along. Oh, and I do want to S-mod solar shielding on this so that, it's now, so that it would be immune to... Things like black holes, neutron beams, that sort of thing. That being said, I am planning to go to the abyss now. I don't think this is enough. I think I need more. So I may have to go to the core worlds to buy more. Where can I buy more? Yama. All right. In the Naraka system, we'll head over to Yama, grab some more. Uh, we're also going to want to fill up our inventory with tons of supplies. But I think we're good. I think we're pretty close to just being able to do this. I think I'm going to go with the approach of just taking 3, like 3,000 supplies or something. Although I've only got so much cargo space. Actually... Hold on. If I store this, does the Alpha Core go with it? I know it does if you build it in, but it looks like it doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't do that if you don't build it in. Okay. I'm going to leave it behind because I don't think I'm going to need it. I don't want to leave behind any of the other ships, though, because putting the officers back in, I'm just going to forget. So ideally, I, won't, I just avoid having to do that. And if that means dragging them into the Abyss, then so be it. Okay. Yeah, I don't care about that. Alright, gate time. Over fuel capacity. Am I? Oh, right. Yeah, because the, the, the eagle had fuel capacity that I now don't have. Actually, before I go, I'd love to get enough story... Like, an extra story point so I can get more cargo capacity on the Atlas. I was kind of hoping to get through without emergency burning since I did that earlier, but looks like I'm not so lucky. And of course, here we are. This is a good situation to have solar shielding on everything. I just missed it. That's unfortunate. That was close. I needed to be a little bit higher. Alright, we're going to Yama. It's a good place to buy supplies. 
Transplutonics. Wait, I think it's just Transplutonics, isn't it? That's fine. There's no reason that we can't also buy supplies. Unless it just turns out to be really expensive over there, which would be a, a mildly annoying. All right, what have you guys got? You better have enough quantity. All oh, right, we're at war right now, of course. My bad. I forgot. Yeah, that should be fine. I'm gonna need a lot more supplies, really. It's stuff like this that makes me want to drop my commission. Because I'm getting to the point where I don't need the money. Although I don't think I'm quite there. Oh, what? The, right? There's a... This is a war zone. What is happening? Okay, alright. Let's do it. That, that's a lot of pirate fleets. I don't think I've ever seen such an Amar... Like, this Armada is crazy. Wow. It's not even the size of each individual fleet. It's just that there's... They're, they're all kind of moderately sized. There's just so many of them. Alright, I'm going to sit here so that I can guarantee that I start taking it. The AI is not super reliable. Alright, and of course you guys are going to go towards that one hound, so we're going to move you up here. Just like that. No, you need to go this way, you fool. We're going to do that. Alright. Yeah, that was not going to hit, of course. Unfortunate. Let's take over this one now. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Oh, I missed that, too? Darn. That sucks. Anyways, you're dead. Yeah, some say that quantity has a quality all of its own, but with all of these ships, I find myself downing that just a little bit. You do need at least a bare minimum of quality. Unless you plan to make yourself look like a joke. Which could be your plan, for all I know. Pirates are very funny. I am not getting this today. I'm just pointing wrong. I can't really blame like the AI for me just missing anti-matter blasters. I can blame it for a lot of things, but missing AM and blaster shots, nah. There, there's really nobody to blame. To be fair, the charge up time does make it right. It's not as easy as hitting most weapons, just because there's like that little bit of charge up time. Come on, come on, let's get him. Boom, alright. Now we make our clean getaway. Alright, I see that you've uh, overloaded the target and then backed off. Let me fix that for you. Oh, it actually lived the Reaper. I thought that would one-shot it, to be honest. Alright, let's take some distance. Then we vent. And we repeat the process. Can we just reap each other at the same time? Very cool. Very nice. They say great minds think alike, but they also say that all fools' thoughts run in the same channel. And what that means is that the people that you don't like all think the same, and the people that you do like all think the same. That's what that really means. 
Now, of course, what are the implications of that? I guess it's up to you to figure out. guy out of the sky. Yeah, it looks like pirates have uh, moras nowadays. That's probably me giving that to them. Now what I've heard is that apparently pirates don't use blueprint packages. They only use individual blueprints. Which is very interesting and would explain a lot because I, sw I sell blueprint packages on the black market all the time. But then a lot, it'll be like, oh, I'll sell like a high-tech blueprint package. But then they won't use any high-tech ships. So I've had my doubts about the whole system, but they're clearly using new ships. Like, they're using the Mora. So it must be the case that earlier on I sold them a Mora blueprint package, and if they don't use, like, like multi-packages, like a high-tech package, that sort of thing, if they don't use those, then that would explain a lot of their behavior. Are they retreating? They are. We could catch those Colossi, but I'm not really interested in doing that. 87%, ladies and gentlemen. They probably just have, yeah, it looks like they've got lots of officers. Level 4, level 2, level 2. Large in quantity, not so much in quality. Because they've got multiple fleets mashed together, there's a lot of officers. And that adds up to a lot of bonus XP. But if you've got a level 2 officer, or level 3 officer in a, in a venture with tons of demods, it's not going to impress anybody. <laughs> You're still not... Oh, they've maneuvered to re-engage, of course. Naturally. What's nice is I get to keep the bonus XP, even though this matchup is going to be even easier. Alright, hold on. Nope. That's not what I want. What I want is this. And you. I believe you have the Reckless. Nope. It's the other one. Six. Number six. You can do Escort Duty. Actually, both of you can. Let's go with that. Hopefully we can just kill them before the... Like, I don't think the... Even if I deployed the Paragons, that they would even get to the battle. I think we would just kill them too fast. Maneuvering to re-engage. What a fool. Like, you were, you guys retreated. And then, you, because you were losing... Oh. Could have avoided that if I was a little quicker there. That definitely has ECCM, because that, those, those Salamanders are faster than normal. Now, let's get a little closer. So we can... Guarantee this shot. Perfect. Yeah, part of the fun of Neuralink is that even when you flame out, you've got something to do because you can just leave. You can just go pilot your other ship. Alright, yeah, they've got lots of fighters. The AI is going to get all squirrely about it. It doesn't matter. I think that Reaper still hit. Even though it got blocked by the fighter, I think the area of effect still reached it. Yeah, it looks like there's an eradicator here. You guys can just kill that, actually. That's fine. There's a single omen down there. How about you guys work together? We've got this up here. Looks like they've got cobras. Nice. You're welcome, by the way. All right, perfect. Now we just gotta go clean up these guys who are probably retreating at this point. Yeah, we can remove all of this stuff. What? 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 How do you end up all the way over there when you were right next to him and I gave you explicit orders to kill him? How? Like if there were fighters harassing you, I would at least understand, but there's nothing. What are you doing? Who do you think you are just ignoring orders like that? I really... I thought I was on Sabo, so that was the Reaper. Oops. You know, I really hope that's the officer that I'm planning to fire anyways, because that'll be... That'll be really funny. That'll be just super convenient, too. I need an excuse, you know. Don't want to... You know, if I, if I just say that because they've got the wrong skill set, you know, that could cause problems with the legality of that. You know, you've got to have good standards for firing somebody for some, you know. 
you know, you don't want to deal with sector law in that regard. You, you know, the, the hegemony is already dealing with AI cores and stuff. They're already suspecting me for a lot of things. I don't want to have, bring any other inspections on me, okay? It, it would be a bad look. Yep, and now they're dead. Very cool. All right, let's dump that. One of the fleets was down here. That's a... All right, well, I guess we've earned, uh, like, one and a half story points. That's cool. Damage output, very nice. Oh, those counted as two separate battles. The first part and the second part. I guess that kind of makes sense. All right, we're going to need a ton of supplies. Let's go to Chico. Good old friend Chico. I like how Ch when you shorten it to just Chico, it's a very cute sounding name. But it is not a very cute place to live. It's the opposite of that, actually. It, it, I hear that it sucks. Just gonna... Turn off our transponder. Okay, apparently that, that doesn't work. Fine. Yeah, yeah, get mad. Stay mad. Stay mad. Mining station. I'll grab that. I don't know if I'll actually do it, but I'll grab that. Fine. All right. We'll go somewhere else. Go to Scathy. No. We should go somewhere with... Uh, well, I do need a lot of supplies. I don't know if I can get them all from here. Even though it's like the only Tritachion system with a gate inside of it. I just need a ton of supplies. That's all I need. Just give me one chance. Alright. And I think I'm going to want to start here and use this black hole to slingshot myself into the abyss. I think that's where we're going with this. That's an Abui. Hey, look, officer. Yeah, don't need that. Oh, right. Actually, I think the reason that there's so many more officers, yeah. I did, in fact, I talked about doubling the the rate of officer spawning because there just wasn't enough. And then I went and did that. It's actually not that hard. There's a, in the settings file, you can just control F officer and scroll down until you find the thing that says the spawn rate of them. And I just doubled that. Because the before it was just, I've spent so many episodes complaining about it that, you know what? Just double it. Simple as that. All right, you leveled up, right. And you got the right skill. Brilliant. So at level, at the next level, you, you have two slots that could roll the skill. And if that doesn't work, I can mentor to re-roll and maybe get it. That's, that's perfect. Somehow, though, despite that, I know you're not going to get it. And he's going to get it instead. That's just the way it works. That's just the way it works. Like, I'm sorry, Eugenia. That's the way it works. I know these things. I've experienced it before. Fate has a cruel sense of humor and all that. Right, so I hire and did I fire? Yes. Okay. So with that out of the way, fuel and supplies, fuel and supplies. Sell that. 1500, still not enough. Speaking of, I'll probably just sell off a lot of these weapons. You guys got burst PDs? No? Alright, then I won't worry about it. Don't think I need any of this stuff. Well, maybe the Reapers. Hold on. I'll keep those. Just for a second. I'm gonna make some space in my inventory. I'm not gonna be using fighters. And then I can go over to you and finally give you a Reaper. There we go. Now everything looks nice and symmetrical between all the builds. And we can sell this. Yeah. Just need to pick up more supplies. Let's go to Sindria. They've got a, they surely have a lot of supplies. And we're welcome there. Unlike the other half of the sector. Because unlike the other places, we're not interfering with Philip's big moneymaker fuel. We're, we don't have fuel production yet. Once we get that going, he's probably not going to like us so much. Orbital habitat? Sure. 
there's a chance of getting something useful, and it's in the same direction as the mining. And let's just have a little quick check up here. How are things going? Yeah, things are going good. Nothing to do, really. I'll just leave that alone. Right, we want to make sure, we want to be a hundred percent sure that things do not go wrong here. Depends what you do. Another reckless, of course. Although you're probably going into a monitor, so reckless might be fine. Target analysis is aggressive. Yeah, don't. I don't think I'm worried about that right now. Can you? Do you guys have monitors actually? Black market? No. Open market? No. That's fine. I'm not in any rush. You can level up. Perfect. And of course, you don't have what I want. So we'll just leave you at this level for now. Because I do want to mentor you to try and reroll for something better. But I'm not, you know, I've got two story points. I want to hold on to one. And the other one I want to use to get extra cargo capacity right now. So this is going to go up to 60% increase, which is 1200, and no maintenance penalty. Brilliant. That's so good. Just like that. We've got a bunch of extra cargo capacity. Without needing to buy another freighter, which you could do, but I don't want to. Okay, so we'll grab that. Grab that. We'll just grab that until our inventory is full. Yeah. I probably want to go up to a bit more crew as well. We'll go up to 1,500, I think. Yeah, look at that. I think we're good. I think we're exactly where we want to be for our abyss exploration. Okay. What? Oh, did I only grab 150 instead of... No, I meant to grab 1,500. I did that wrong. I did that the wrong way. Silly me. There we go. Do they have a shortage of crew? That's what it looked like. Because Torna saw something red over there. Maybe it's just my imagination. Alright, I think we're going to leave now. Hey, look at that, Sindria. It's almost a perfect fortress world. You just need trace volatiles and a hypershot tap and you're good to go. Not a bad idea, Philip. Not bad. It's too bad you would never actually be able to pull that off. You useless bureaucrat. Oh right, of course. Oh look at that, they don't even they don't even break our stuff. And overall, even though I got black market attention, I still got positive relations out of that. That's brilliant. That's part of my master plan, really. It's all an in ingenious, well calculated move. Yoink. Archimedes last name. Oh, that's right. I didn't name. You have a name. You have a real name. I mean, Wings of Icarus sounds pretty cool. Although, maybe it's a bit on the nose. Archimedes last stand, Wings of Icarus. You know, that's a good pairing. Archimedes and Icarus. It's a, it's a classic pairing. I was about to say Dreams of Kalan, but I don't actually want to name it after anything in the sector. Dreams of probably water, something blue, ocean. Dreams of oceans. No. Dreams of something a bit more poetic than just saying oceans, right? It's going to be a bit more abstract. Dreams of rain? Maybe. 
Of course, you don't want to use of and basically. It's it's pretty easy to just kind of use of and basically everything. So I do want to avoid that. Uh, hold on. Let's see. I had an idea. Valorant. Valorant fuselage. Excalibur rising. Somebody's Excalibur is rising, and I did not spell that right. Excalibur. Of course, everybody knows the famous sword, Excalibur. Excalibur. We'll call this um, something photons. Adjective photons. I was thinking leaky. That, no, that, that's weird. Not ruinous. That sounds too powerful. I want to give them like a personality, like like a, like a personality adjective. Like to, to try and what's the word I'm looking for? To sort of humanize them. But that's not the word. It's not humanize. It's a different word. It's the one where you project human qualities onto inanimate objects. I forget what it is. But I want to do that, basically. Timid photons. No, I've got to get an extra eye in there. Failure of imagination. Imagination's second cousin. This is a long name. So you've got Dreams of Rain, Timid Photons, Imagination's second cousin. Lost but not alone. Treasures of Neptune. So you got Dreams of Rain, Timid Photons, Imagination's Second Cousin, Lost But Not Alone, Treasures of Neptune. Thinking of the word Covenant, that could be cool, incorporating it. Ark of the Covenant seems a bit too bold of a name, but I want something that kind of invokes a similar idea. Not Covenant Breaker, no. That would not work. Something that invokes majesty. Actually, that could be one of them. Majestic Reunion. And then we can give this one... Something like... Something mundane but related to the covenant to a covenant to the idea of that like the pen that wrote the covenant or tablets of stone something along those lines stone tablets Stone. Pen. The... I think I might... No, I don't like carved stone. It's kind of a low-tech name, really. Let's try something else. Let's, let's try a different train of thought. I'm not coming up with anything. I could, I could just steal forward unto dawn. Gatekeeper of, of the frontier. How about that? Amus.
friend of the... Friend of the what? Friend of the Forgotten? Friend of the Titans. Which is actually fitting because it's going to be an escort for a Paragon. Friend of the Titans, I like that. We'll call this one Soul Beacon. Yeah, sure. Alright. Dreams of Rain, Timid Photons, Imagination's Second Cousin, Lost But Not Alone, Treasures of Neptune, Majestic Reunion, Gatekeeper of the Frontier, Friend of the Titans, Soul Beacon, Valorant Fuselage. Did I spell that right? Or is that like Fuselage? I actually can't remember. I think that's... I think that's correct. Excalibur Rising, Archimedes Last Stand, Wings of Icarus. All right, that's fine. I think that's pretty solid. You know, I'm no poet, but I think I'm going to be happy with that. All right, well, maybe I shouldn't be running into every storm when I'm trying to preserve supplies for the journey. But it also, I think I'll be fine anyways. It would be nice if they just conveniently hit the one that... It would be nice if they all just conveniently hit Majestic Reunion because it's immune to the damage. But of course, that's not how RNG works. Alright. Off we go. Yoink. Right, that only gets me kind of to the edge of the abyss, really. And now we're slow. Naturally. That's the way the abyss works. All right, I'm still missing an ox. I want to grab... I think, yeah, I'll, I'll end up with exactly 15 ships. One Prometheus, one Atlas, an ox, and those will be my three support ships. And then I can grab a monitor, and that will round out my combat ship. Wait, no, hold on. I want a monitor and the eagle. So I actually have 16 ships. which means I will need to scroll down to see the, uh, the ox. It's a little... I'm looking at the sensors over here in the bottom right corner. It's a little far away. I don't think I'm going to go after that one. It's probably not anything useful anyways. Like, it's going to be like a jump point into some empty system that has nothing of value. Those happen. Those happen a lot. All right, let's speed up time, because this is going to take a while. All right, this is close. Let's have a look. It's a nothing. What about you? Yeah, let's do it. All right, and if you read through the description here... Oddly pristine, as if sent on a long journey, fresh from the forge, without personalized outfitting and customization. Yourself as breach the exterior and find a different story. Crudely anchored power conduits and coolant tubes have been rigged haphazardly through the shafts and corridors of the ship. Safety doors are stuck open and hatches cut through to provide access to serpentine bundles of cable. It's not high quality work. The occasional power down maintenance drone, stupid automatic things meant to assist human techniques, suggest the obvious culprits. Your salvers must make numerous cuts to clear access to the core ship systems. It is not dangerous, merely inconvenient. It is near the true count center point of the hull volume that they find a trio of AI cores, two gammas and a beta from the looks of the casings. They are unpowered, the coolant congealed in its pipes. What looked to be valuable, if legally problematic find, is a bust, however. The AI cores are hollowed out, as if perfect spheres of nothingness appeared where once cybernetic intelligence dwelled. The computer memory of the ship proper has no answers. It was overridden from the start and appears to be convinced that it's still in its forge cradle. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? The, set, the inside of the AI cores is perfectly hollowed out by some kind of sphere shape, almost as if it was scooped out from an ex... That's something you, not something you can do externally. It was done internally, perhaps through the techniques of phase space. 
perhaps the AI, our right to fear, what lies beyond the veil. And of course you just get a bunch of nothing. And surveying is completely useless because this planet will not even exist once we leave. Well, I mean, it'll be here for a little bit, but it, it won't exist for a long time. It'll despawn. And even if you survey it, you can't colonize it because it's in deep hyperspace. Why would any colonists come out here? Nobody's going to migrate out here. That would be silly. Nobody wants to be left behind out here either. Like, supply lines simply wouldn't exist. Like, you expect merchant fleets to come out here? Nonsense. That's silly. Yeah, that's not my problem. No, this was actually a pretty easy journey. Normally you find more s stuff popping up. Not hostile, just, you know, random sensor things. Abyssal lights. I've not seen any of those yet. I guess it is what it is. Is this another nothing? Looks like it. Yeah, the abyss is the definition of, hey, it's quiet. Too quiet. Yep, that's the mining station. Let's... This, I believe this description for Hades is very specific. It doesn't take a detailed survey to ascertain that this is a planet rich in transplutonic ore. The remains of a crude, automated ref mining refining operation sprawl like an uncontrolled growth across the surface. It is withered now. The fusion reactors left cold. Hundreds of auto-forged kilotons, telemeter units, teleminer units, like dead beetles, seemingly swept into drifts by titanic wind. Sometimes it'd be like that, for sure. Yep. And then I believe this provides a pretty solid amount of transplutonic ores, which I don't think I actually have enough cargo capacity for them right now. And then there's the mothball equipment cache. Here we are. You got a guardian, and we've got some supporting ships. With what I've got, it's it's already over. In fact, I only need one Paragon to do this. But it's fine if I burn through some supplies because I'm just going to make car... That'll make more space for me to actually salvage that mining facility. Well, that's clearly coming after me. Nope, it changed its mind. I, I, I guess I was just imagining it. It was always going after the Omen. Alright, let's get away from the machine guns. Oh, right, you actually sniped the little one. That's impressive. Let's go back to where I've stripped off the armor. There we go. Oh, you took care of one on your own. Very cool. And this thing's already dying. So why wouldn't it be? Yeah, just turn around. That's fine. Perfect. Thank you. It's very kind of you to cooperate so easily. Hitting the little guys is going to be a little pain. Just get closer. Simple as that. Now let's, let's do this nice and quick. And we're done. Now we're done. No? Oh, there's still one up there. Sentry drone. Get him. Easy. Pick through the wreckage. Yup. Actually, I can dump this. Mm-hmm. Equipment cache. Wormhole calibration data for nearby wormhole. Hmm. What could that mean? Well, it means a lot of things. Gotta pay attention. Really? There was nothing? All right. Okie dokie. If you say so. Deploy wormhole anchor. It's a bit interesting that it does it like this, which this makes me feel like there's going to be other items that you can put here in the future. Otherwise, they would have just like deployed it immediately, right? So that's interesting. Uh, first, let's go salvage this. Of course, it also has automated defenses. You know what? I think we're fine. I think we're actually fine. 
We'll come back for it. I'm pretty sure I've got enough. Transit. Where the heck are we? Just you wait and see. Unlikely to form naturally in interstellar space, this planet must have been thrown from its home system by some cataclysmic interaction in Aeon's past. Adrift, it is doomed to shrink and cool towards the interstellar medium over billions of cycles. Right. What we have here is the gate hauler. Look how big that thing is. Compare that to like the size of a paragon, even on this view scale. It is huge. Your fleet approaches Domain Era Gate Hauler. It is a leviathan from out of time, at once familiar from its many and varied depictions in the secondary culture of the post-collapse Persian sector. But to see it here, in the proverbial flesh, it is an alien force of the Domain's power reified before you, looming like a blackened emperor slumped dead, but still dreaming on a throne of stars. Damn, that's some poetic stuff right there. Look at this thing. I think this is the back end with the big engine, and that's the front end that holds the gate. You feel the weight of history pressing upon your chest. A tone like a distant ringing. You are frozen for an unconscious moment, as if your mind was held in the gaze of a god. And in the next instant, it is nothing but the buzz of power conduits and low thrum of the agrav within the dry bubble, usually relegated to a filter of unperception by your subconscious. You adjust your uniform and turn to your bridge officers. It is no simple task to appraise a gate hauler, for the ship is truly massive. Your officers, however, have the tools, ancient data files, and a trained and ready crew. Known variants of gate hauler design are pulled up and shared on a display to match to the example which looms over your fleet. Your operations chief oversees the deployment of salvers to key points in coordination with targeted sensor sweeps. Meanwhile, your tech officer and chief engineer review the deep archive containing flight statistics on thousands of recorded gate hauler deployments in order to anticipate the results of in-transit damage and subsequent self-repair protocols. All right. Ops orders the salvers to prioritize a data connection, and it's soon online via ancient protocols. Walls of amber error codes glow in your tech officer's interface. You have a part of your answer soon enough. The functioning of the gate hauler's enormous but primitive Alcubierre drive system was massively disrupted mid-transit. The ship's automation could not ascertain the cause of the discontinuity, and so, to protect the literally astronomical value of its cargo, forced the ship into an automatic failsafe mode. Most of the reigning fuel was dumped and the rest used to slow into an orbit of the most accessible nearby mass concentration, this lonely ice giant. The maneuver took the better part of a century. Standard procedure would have the domain send a well-supplied expedition of gate engineers to reset the primary systems and send the hauler back on its journey, albeit many hundreds of cycles behind schedule. But no one showed up. The ancient records note that gate haulers would carry a standard complement of automated survey, extraction, and refining drones in the case of lost contact. The documents seem to imply the ability to procure new fuel sources of fuel and materials effectively at vast distances from the failsafe point, though at the scale implied, this process would be inefficient at superluminal speeds even via hyperspace, assuming use of baseline domain frontier technology. You can only conclude that this, particularly self that this particular self-recovery effort ended with the drone expedition sent to the limbo system, and it was used to and it was to use obscure explorarium wormhole technology to resupply the gate hauler so that it could continue its mission. Obscure explorarium wormhole te technology. I guess that's why there's a wormhole anchor here. In any event, your search has turned up no additional technological treasures. Aside from the undeployed gate itself, of course, how tight in the many-limbed face of the great starship. The details accumulate, each senior officer manipulating the shared display as reports are given. Finally, your chief engineer clears the hollow back to a slowly rotating, false-lit overview of the vast starship. They suppress a brief smile as they clear their throat. Sir, 
pause for anticipation, a rare indulgence by your habitually practical chief engineer. I have the pleasure to report that it is possible to reactivate the gate hauler. It could be targeted to a known system within the Persian sector in your command. It just needs transbutonics, a lot of transbutonics. Unlike familiar Starship engines, the gate hauler doesn't use the standard domain AM fuel package. Once a critical mass of transbutonics is achieved, the gate hauler will be able to operate for at least a thousand cycles, with functionally unlimited range within the bounds of the Persian sector. All right. I've actually not asked this question before. What is this? What are the risks? The gate haulers were built for reliability. Every fail state reverts to a lower energy safe mode. The backups of backups have backups. Even intentionally sabotaging a hauler would involve extreme effort. Your tech officer taps at a data pad with a vexed look, but raises no objection. A silence descends. There's no need to put it into words. The arrival of a gate hauler in the Persian sector would be momentous. All right, how do we put this thing back online? An interactive display appears in your executive interface, and with a few manipulations, the chief has a material schedule prepared for your review. 1,000 transbutonics. And that's why this planet back in limbo it happens to be one with a ton of transbutonics. It's because you're going to need them. And also, I guess, because that's why... You know, the ship stopped here and then used a wormhole technology to send the drones over to Limbo to start harvesting transbutonics, I guess is the idea. But it failed, which is why there's a bunch of dead equipment on the planet when you read the description. But now we're here, and we can bring a thousand very easily, or it, you could bring like, I think like 700, and you'll get like 300 from the mining facility in orbit of the planet. Proceed. Your operation chief oversees the transfer of transbutonics. Streams of cargo drones feed the unimaginably huge bulk of the hauler. It seems strange that so little can move so much so far. With only a little coaxing, the gate hauler's automation turns into something like machine awareness. Sensors report power surges throughout the hull as ancient conduits and machines self-test, some failing. Long dormant self-repair drones begin to seethe like vermin. And slowly, your fleet's various sensors feel the growing power of the machine. Magnetic fields shudder, neutrinos begin to spill forth in earnest from reactions deep within the mass of the beast. Gravitic fluctuations from warp pylons flutter, and your own drive bubble compensates. It will take about a day, engineering reports, and then the gate hauler will be ready to receive navigational input. It's sputtering, but it's alive. Your fleet approaches Domain Era Gate Hauler. The Titanic ship lays potent before you, ancient but powerful drive fields thrumming through the membrane of space-time. You can almost feel it through the A-Grav self-correction, the drone of a god machine. Almost. Once provided with a destination, the Gate Hauler will travel through normal space. A gate cannot be moved through hyperspace. The Hauler will travel faster than light speed, thankfully, due to its venerable Alcubierre drive which don't work, by the way. Unfortunately, there's some problems with the, even in theory, right? You know, setting aside the issue of negative mass, even in theory, they don't work because an Alcubierre drive bubble can exist theoretically above light speed. But the problem is in order to do that, it has to be traveling faster than light speed when you create the bubble, right? It's kind of a catch-22. It's like you can, it can exist at, at superluminal speeds in theory, but the problem is that in order to push it above superluminal speeds, you already have to be going faster than light. So, you know, unless... And, you know, I'm assuming in the world of Star Sector, they make some additional physics breakthroughs that make this possible. Indeed, the hauler will quickly accelerate to an apparent normal space speed, which your fleet cannot match with its relatively tiny in-system drives. The journey will still take quite some time due to traveling significantly slower than standard hyperspace permits. After it has arrived at the target destination, you may give the order to deploy the gate to an unoccupied stable location. Gamma link. How long will it take? 440 days. Although again, I've already got a gate right next door, and I would have to dismantle 
the nav buoy in system in order to make this work. And apparently they fixed the bug where it actually deletes the stable point and lets you make another one. So it actually occupies a stable point. I believe that's the case. And then, yeah, we'll find out. We will find out when we get there. But the thing is, I don't really have anywhere else to send it, to be honest. Sure, there's a gate next door, but it is always nice to have it directly in system. And the next place that I plan to colonize already has a gate. So, might as well. All right, and watch this. So it's going to start fire up the engines. It's going to start turning upwards. All right, let's speed this up. And right, we're going to start moving. Because it starts slow. I don't know how the cash is even reaching me out here. But I guess somehow it is. Let's, uh, let's just go up here. Uh, it feels kind of weird leaving it out of sight. But the reality is... It's slow at first, but it does genuinely just accelerate. Continuously. So we're going to race ahead of it. It's probably going to pass us. And get a little bit of a head start. There we go. A little to the left. You can see it on the map here. We're still pulling ahead of it. Slowly but surely, that trend will reverse. It's going to claw its way back towards us. Yep. Yeah, I think it's reversing now. Because it's, it's just gone through that last ring. Yeah, now it's getting closer. It's going to speed right past us. As a matter of fact, let's just do that and then right click. Can I get can I see it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, see so now it's faster than us. Cuz it just keeps accelerating. Which is a nice touch. You know, it could have just, like, blinked out of existence and said, Oh, it's going. But now it's faster than us. Of course, this, uh... Now I've got to fly all the way back, which is... A little yucky. And this is the wormhole, yeah. So, off it goes. And it'll just fly straight through normal space. Using a hypothetical Alcubierre drive. cool. It's very cool. I like what they've done with the place. Now, of course, now we've got to get the wormhole anchors, which I believe the correct way to do this. I've heard some people say that you can take them from both ends, which I thought meant that you could take it from, like, I could grab the other end from here, but I don't believe you can do that. So we have to do shut this down, confirm, transverse jump out of here, and guess what? We're not even on the map. Well, we're, we're, we're way down here. And then we fly over to Limbo. And then we pick up the other end. And then that will give us our two wormholes. Enter to open space. Estimated 440 days of tran uh, to transit. And that's what's out here. Cool, isn't it? I've actually used less, like only a thousand supplies. Crazy. I thought coming out here with a big fleet would mean I would use more. Oh well. It doesn't hurt to come over prepared. Let's see. So we go grab this wormhole, we also grab this manning station now that we've got cargo space. Bada bing, bada boom. Alright, so that's finished. You start upgrading that immediately. No reason not to. How long does it take to reach the next stage? I'm actually not sure. 
Yeah, accessibility is low, unfortunately. So we've got a lot of extra stuff that we can't sell, but we do finally have custom productions, which means not only can we build stuff, we can actually determine our fleet doctrine. I think usually... So in terms of fleet power, the stuff that you choose is more of an aesthetic choice than anything else. At least that's the intention. I might as well deploy these guys so they can get some XP. The, the intention is that it's more of an aesthetic choice and that the picking a good fleet composition doesn't actually make your con your your stuff stronger. And for that reason, I think that the best choice would be to pick like well number one, you want high you want to you want to make sure that your fleets have good burn speed so they can actually catch things. And number two, getting ships with built-in sensors like omens and uh, omens in the Odyssey, for example are all good choices because they give you more sensor range. So if you're in the same system as your as your patrols, you have better vision within your, your in case there's like pirate armadas sneaking around. That sort of thing. Like the logistics side of it ends up being more useful because the combat at least for the purposes of auto resolve doesn't really matter. If you actually join your your patrols in battle, it will matter because they actually get simulated in that case. Yeah, see, look at that. All right, it's really only like 200, okay. Maybe you get more, no, not that much more. So yeah, you only get like 200, 250. So you do have to bring most of the transmetonics yourself. And if I check inventory, yeah, wormhole anchor, wormhole scanner. Now we can grab this one. And now we're ready to go. Of course, wormholes take about a year to set up normally. It's only in this case because the supply cache, that they've set it up so that after doing the supply cache, you can deploy it and it immediately works. But normally, using wormholes, they take some time to get set up. They take a full year. So you can't just like move them around at your convenience. It's meant to be like a permanent connection. Well, then again, I'm going to colonize two systems right now. They both have, one of them's got a gate, one of them's getting a gate. So maybe I'll send, maybe I'll use a wormhole for my current system and then send the gate hauler somewhere else. That might be the way to do it. Colony crisis. So it looks like we've rolled up Persian League. They're at the top of the list, so I guess that's probably why. All right, uh, hopefully we can get there before things become too bad. Tell the person that is planning on a lengthy blockade of one of your systems. Colonies in that system will suffer a major accessibility penalty. So this is one of the examples of how the game makes it easier to split up your colonies instead of stacking them all in the same system. Because if you have, right now I've got them both in the same system, but if they were in separate systems, then only one system would get hit with the accessibility penalty and you could largely ignore the blockade. If the blockade is defeated, your standing with the hegemony and independence will increase substantially, and Persian League will likely abandon further efforts to strong-arm you and be more open to negotiation. So you can re you can re avert the crisis by dropping event progress low enough, and then something else will get rolled. You can go to Kazaron and join the League, or Kazaron is tactically bombarded. Now my understanding is that the Persian League crisis and there's an abyssal light plunk just do a little sensor scan gives you a bit of extra sensor range temporarily what is this looks a little weird on the mini map let's hop right in yeah i guess because nascent gravity wells don't normally show up on the mini map that's probably why interesting all right inconsistencies and the expected mass densities for this category of planetoid. Your sensors officer orders additional sweeps at higher power and resolution. A picture of the situation starts to come together. Large deposits of useful elements have been extracted and the dig sites, whether surface deposits or deep veins, have been carefully returned to something approximating their natural state. Shafts have been infilled, tailing spreads evenly and packed over with ex the extraction fields. Sensor consults with your operations chief who did a stint in fringe mining earlier in their career. Ops looks grim. <clears throat> Don't look right, sir. 
I could have been an indie miner or a scav. Could have. But there's nothing. No temporary works, no pillaring, no tread tracks. Should be dead power cells and ration wrappers scattered like stars in the dark. Ain't nothing. No one cleans up like this. Not even tacky auto miners. No profit in it. Especially not out here. You know, I'll spend 100 supplies to survey this. Oh, that's it? They just say that it's weird and then we move on? Obviously, you, even if you have enough crew, you can't. This planet is in deep abyssal hyperspace and cannot be colonized. Just so that you are all aware. Nothing shows up there. That's probably fake, but we're going to go have a look anyways. We're out here. Might as well have a little fun. The other one does not seem to be changing orientation no matter much how much I move laterally. So I'm going to guess that that's also pretty much confirms that it's fake. Or because the thing about fake signals is that they don't actually simulate a point in space. It just shows up in the directional view. So if it's a real object, as you drive in a, like a, a direction sort of perpendicular to it, then it should change its heading as you move. But since it doesn't, that means that it's likely a fake. Unless it's really far. In which case, maybe you wouldn't notice, but... Yeah, no, these are fake. Because, of course, why would there be anything out here? Alright, um... So we've rolled... I guess the, the blockade will happen... When we reach 600. Right now, there's no blockade yet. Of course, I do have some idea of how to deal with the blockade. Although the accessibility is going to hurt this one. This one, 140%. Even if you drop down to 80, that's still enough for me to ship out all of this. So we're looking fine. It's really the other guy that's got issues. Alderaan's stronghold. Otherwise known as Mr. Laurier's Fortress of Dreams. Yeah, we'll just leave that. That is what it is. Let's get out of here. Right, and then sometimes there'll be sensor profiles that just kind of behave weirdly. That was definitely moving with us, wasn't it? All right, I'll explore that. Whatever. Might as well. Get a little bit of lore. You know, there's no practical reason to do this. Wait. Fully surveyed, so this is the same place. Oh, right, because I transverse jumped over here. I thought this was moving. Maybe it was moving. Maybe it's spooky abyssal hyperspace stuff. Nonsense happening. Yeah, and I failed the, uh, I failed the mission over there. That's fine. Uh, where was this exactly? It's right in this top corner. Just remember that. It's this orange star right in the top corner has a mining station. I'm about to fail this too. Blue giant. Maybe that's where the other Tesseract uh, Hypershunt is. It is a blue giant, so there's always that possibility. And it's pretty far from the other one. I would expect there to be a decent amount of loot in the same system as a Tesseract, although I guess it's not necessarily guaranteed. I believe this is the one that moves... No, it doesn't. Okay, there, there's definitely... There's one kind that follows you, but if you try to move towards it, it moves away. It's a strange one. All right, let's not fall into the black hole. Actually, what if I what if I go touch the black hole and see what it says? If it just says this is an ordinary black hole, I'd be very sad. Yeah, that's gonna burn through supplies. I don't really need to scan it for anything. And you can kind of hear the, the spooky music in the background. Yeah, no, it just, uh, I'm not seeing anything in its description that's interesting. Yeah, there's one kind that follows you, but then if you, or rather, what it does is it, it appears to stay still. And then if you move towards it, it moves away from you at the same speed. And if you travel in a different direction, it appears to stay still. So that it looks like it's actually something that you can reach, but then as soon as you try to go towards it, it's impossible. 
All right, we're almost out. Ooh, I'm hearing ghosts. Ooh. Hey, look. We're back to normal hyperspace. Alright, I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. See ya.